the the Godfather, Chris Saylor. How you doing? Fantastic, man. I mean, yeah. I can't believe it's it's been uh, it's been sixteen years in the making doing this stuff. 16, so six sixteen years. Sixteen years. Yeah, yeah I'm reminded, man, because I'm I'm turning forty on Monday. So Big it gives four. me. Oh. A, Gives me a good basis, man. Started at age twenty three, and I'm turning forty. So wow, Six, sixteen years of running camps, man. Absolutely nuts. It's amazing. So when you're doing that, doing this for this long now, mm-hmm. what is it from where you're at now to where you started? How does it feel to build something for that long and build it to the degree where you, which you're at now? I mean, honestly, it's unbelievable. I was looking through the other day as I'm doing these rankings and, and getting things prepped for Vegas. I mean, even two years ago. It looks totally different, um, and you know, to look back 16 years, uh, it's it's almost impossible to to understand. Um, you know, the vision I had back then, the goals I set back then, um, you know, just to create a camp that actually would exist for a few years, let alone 16 years, was was a, a thought that I thought was impossible. Um, but it's, I mean, it's changed completely. You think back to the very first camp, you have about 12, 15 kids, um, to now selling out kids at 75, you know, with with uh, with a month to spare. Um, it, it's, it's totally changed. And, and the biggest thing that's changed really is the exposure for the kids. Um, the scholarship numbers, um, the inclusion of long snapping, um, you know, the relationship with college coaches, um, you know, really putting specials on the map. That's the biggest change. Um, guys are getting offers earlier and earlier. I mean, the other day I had a guy, I had, I had a kicker call me yesterday about leaving early for the NFL when he has two years of eligibility remaining. I mean, that's something 16 years ago. It's unheard of. Right. So we're really, we're really putting ourselves on the map and, and really, um, you know, this is a chance for it to continue to grow. So there's more out there that we can do. It's amazing. Declaring early as a kicker. Yep. Has that ever happened before? Uh, it has a few times. It, um, but, but I guess has that truly happened where a true junior has declared? Mm-hmm. Uh, it's, it's, yeah, it's the, not I mean, just the last a one. No, the last one was Bradley Pinon, who was a two-time top, top 12 member of ours that came through Vegas. Um, he left early out of Clemson and got drafted by the Niners. He was the first guy taken. Amazing. So you kind of set the precedent. Um, and you know, now every year it's in the conversation, the top one or two guys in our classmen are, are, are talked about. And, and this particular player asked me, he said, you know, I had an agent call me. So if, if I leave, I'm going to be the first guy taken. So and this someone with two years of eligibility remaining. So, um, you know, like I said, 16 years ago, not a chance. Um, now you got guys really considering leaving early for, you know, big contracts. So it's, it, it really is a tribute to what we've been able to do. Yeah. Well, I mean, even so, you talk about 16 years ago, just, with recruiting in college coming out of high school. Yep, absolutely, right? I mean, yeah. let's start there first. Let's slow down. <laughs> yeah, I know. So, I mean, I know. well, let's go back even further because uh, you were a kicker, obviously, and you went to UCLA, had an amazing career, college career, and then you went on to the NFL and did some great things. What was recruiting like back then for you as a kicker? I mean, it, it, it was so long ago, and, and really it was at that point in time, um, you know, I always think back to it and say, you know, as I talk to my, to my parents and players and, and, and the young players as far as what they're going through now, um, it was completely different. It was off the map. I mean, it, we, at that point in time, you know, we were walk-ons. Um, and, and really, I, I stumbled into kicking. Uh, I did it in a PE class as a freshman, had no idea what I was doing. Um, by sophomore year, the coaches asked me to come out and play. Um, just did it really at practice. I mean, I did maybe one or two practices a week and kicked in games. Didn't had no idea what I was doing and, and enjoyed a small amount of success, but really through junior, uh, sophomore, junior year, I was playing soccer. There was no doubt in my mind. It was just something fun that I did, hanging out with my friends. Uh, and then my senior year, it just I ended up having a huge year at 22 field goals, um, a lot of 50 yarders, and all of a sudden I got attention and and um, really had no clue what it would be like to be recruited and or kick in college. It was never a thought of mine. I was playing soccer my whole life, and that's what I was going to do. Um, and uh, you know, as I researched it. No one got scholarships. I think the year before, maybe there was two or three um, total. So when, when my coach told me, hey, this is something that's, that's unprecedented, I said, that's pretty cool. Um, you know, I had offers from UCLA, had offers from Stanford, had offers from Cal, um, had offers from as far from teams in the West Coast, Colorado schools like that. Um, so, you know, my parents say, it's a full scholarship to Stanford. We got we to talk about this. Um, it just it, it, uh, became an option for me. I started taking, taking uh, recruiting visits. And, uh, and every trip I took, every coach told me, man, this is something that we don't do. So you're wow. special enough to, uh, you're special enough to us. And we're going to go here for the very first time. Um, so, and, and really, and then as I progressed through college, did my thing, this is why I started the business because the numbers really didn't grow while I was in college. I mean, maybe from, from five guys to seven guys or something like that. But, um, even when I started my company, um, you know, in, in, uh, in 99, 2000, there was still only a handful of guys getting scholarships. And that's why I did this. So it was, it's, it's nuts to think where it's come. 
Yeah, and um, just amazing. And this was back – so you started – what, you 94 was your freshman year? 95. 95, 95. Yep, the fall, the fall of 95 wow, was my 95. first year of college. Yeah, and it's amazing yep. to think that it still wasn't and, – and even then, you know, kicking was still a very big part of football and they're still yeah. working that attention for that many years. Like long yep. snapping is a little more – you can understand it a little more. Right. But, but kicking is still kind of – I'm so shocked by that. Yeah. I mean, the, the thing was, is you got to remember this pre-internet. So True. I think, True. I think the launch of the internet is what changed everything. Um, just, there wasn't, um, no one put focus on it. it was like, like myself, I didn't, I didn't care about kicking. I just did it as a side job. Um, and, and really because of that, there was no good coaching. Um, my schools don't have kicking coaches. So there was no real camps that were out there. Um, so for the most part, we were a risk. Yeah. So if, if there's a talent, a guy would take them on, on, you know, possible talent potential, but ultimately come in and prove it. Once you prove it, we may put you on scholarship. It's kind of the yeah. way it was. Um, but then when they, with the launch of the internet, when I started my company, we were able to show guys, yeah. um, get, get footage online, um, start to train guys properly. And I mean, you look at it for back then and you had a couple hundred kids attending camps. Now you got thousands. Right. So, um, and with the launch of the internet, like I said, the, the information is available and, and the, um, us as resources is, is uh, what college coaches look towards to, to make it happen. That's a great way to put it. Resource. You guys are a, a, a very valuable resource to college yeah. uh, coaches and now NFL scouts, NFL coaches. Right. It's awesome to see um, that, how you guys bleed into the NFL now as you guys have gone, you know, yeah. 16 years now. You guys are just – it's amazing too because it's, it's a very uh, – the numbers stand out a little more because there's only 32 kickers, only 32 long snappers, 32 punters. So the numbers kind of jump out at you a little more. I think it's awesome. Uh, 100%. I mean, that, me and Ruby always say we kind of feel like an agent sometimes. Uh, you know, we're yeah. work, working behind the scenes for all of our kids. Um, and, and really, that's not what we got into this for. Um, mm -hmm. But it's part of the job. I mean, kids come to camps now to get that exposure that uses as a resource. Um, but yeah, the numbers have, have gone huge. And, and really, I mean, between Ruby and myself, we're responsible for about 80% of the scholarships that come out every year um, into the college level. Um, and, and last year, I think we had, I mean, over 40 guys start somewhere in a preseason game in the NFL. Um, and I myself personally, we have, I have, I have 19 guys starting in the NFL right now. Yeah. So over the course of 16 years, I think, um, you know, that's pretty amazing and, and really looking towards the future as the older guys start to retire. Um, I mean, I, I see us having pretty much, you know, 90, 95% of the guys in the NFL. Will I don't see what not. Yep. I, I don't see what would stop you guys from that. I think the growth, yeah. the growth from when you start, well, at least from when I, uh, you know, from when my brother started and watching you guys grow, mm. just to see it now, I there's no, <laughs> there's, I don't see it topping out at any point because just yeah. I feel like there's so much room left. Yeah, you know, there I is. Was, I mean, look at look at the contracts in the NFL. Yeah. I mean, look at the money they're getting paid. I mean, Justin Tucker was tagged as a franchise player this last year. Yeah, um, that's stuff that's unheard of. So I think more young players are doing it because they see there's a future in it. There's scholarships. There's there's contracts. Um, there's longevity in the positions. Um, so, I mean, we're working to, to take this thing to the, to the moon. Um, and that's one of the big part of this web series is continue to get more and more exposure for guys. I'm going to look this up real quick. I'm sorry. I'm going to, but I came across something, um, and maybe you can help me verify this. Like the, I, I saw a number, a crazy number that okay. the lead, the top are the all time leading scorers in the NFL. Like oh, yeah. the top 10, <laughs> like six yep. of the top 10 are kickers. Yep. It's, uh. I mean, you look at it in two ways. I mean, you have your receivers and running backs who obviously put up a lot of points, but their careers last, what's the average, four to five years. I mean, yeah. those are the good ones. Those are the good ones. Right. So I think, I think actually Morton Anderson, who's in the uh, one of the finalists this year for the NFL Hall of Fame, is the all-time leading scorer. And he played for 20-something years. Yeah. So um, and those are some of the guys I looked up to as I started my business. Um, but, yeah, I mean, we're, we're, uh, we're putting points on the board. Um, the percentages are going up every year. They're changing the rules in the NFL because of it. Because of it, yeah. Uh, because of it. And, and really, I think we're a huge part of that in our training and, and exposure we're giving these kids. And, I mean, the sky's the limit. I mean, I hope they keep changing them, make it more difficult so we can train guys to be better. Um, but, yeah, 100%. You look at the top scorers. You look at guys that have played in the league the longest amount of time. Um, it's almost always kickers and snappers. Yeah, it's 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 – it's really cool, and I keep describing it as like the final frontier of football for people, yeah. for people who like football, you know, yeah. and, and it's such a cool world. Uh, so that's interesting. You brought the, the NFL rules and the changing of the PAT and whatnot, and, and uh, you know, every year there seems to be discussions about like kickoffs. You know, should we mm -hmm. just do away with kickoffs? 
you know, yeah. should we just get away, go away with PATs? I mean, when you hear stuff like that, that has to kind of, you have to kind of be a little irked by it in some ways, right? Absolutely. Um, you know, it's called football. You know, it's, it's, there's a reason for that, and that's where the game starts, um, and it's, it's part of the tradition of the game. Um, I understand with the injuries and things like that and, and collision, but, I mean, it really happens in all the plays. So, you know, you think about taking the things out of football, um, you know, I mean, do away with the whole thing at some point then if, if you're going to go in that route. But um, the change of the rules as far as making the extra points deeper, I think it's great. Yeah. Um, like anything else, we're getting better. You might as well make it more difficult so that uh, you know guys can work harder and, and make it um, more of a spectator sport. Extra points became too easy. It was boring. Who watched the extra point? But now they're exciting. You know, yeah. get, you know I think one one week they missed 11 extra points. So there's actually a decision to be made now, and I think it changes the outcomes of games. Um, so better kickers and better long snappers are actually making a difference in the game, which is better for us. Okay. Um, but as far as kickoffs, things like that, I mean, I understand that there's there's um, uh, injury concerns there. So, but if things change, we all adapt. So, yeah. you know, we're always looking out for the for the health of the players too. And um, but you know, Ruben and I've always said that you know there's always going to be a position for us. Um, and if anything, you know, if they change things, those make us even more valuable. That's the way I look at it. So, yeah. we continue to train guys to to step it up. And you know, one thing you mentioned earlier, Tanner, I want to say is that you know, in the change of this game, um, you know, one of the biggest things you look at as far as um, what we've been able to do, kickers, punters, and long snappers are athletes. You know, you look back 20, 30 years ago, it wasn't that way. Right. Um, you know, there's so many things made up of, of, you know, talking about kickers and on athleticism. I mean, you take, you take a punter out of the game, uh, you take them to the side and play other sports with them, play some golf with them, um, throw them in there as, as even another position. I mean, it's amazing what these guys are capable of doing right now. Um, and that's a big part of the growth is, is um, the athleticism. And that it goes back to, you know, looking at these guys as seventh graders, eighth graders. They want to do it now because there's a future. Therefore, yeah. more and more athletes are churning to this as a specialty early on. Yeah. Um, and that's, that's one of the coolest parts for me is that you know, we're not getting these guys who just can't play anything else anymore. Yeah. We're not just getting soccer players. We're getting athletes to say, hey, there's a future here, and I, I'm not going to get hurt like I would as a receiver. So let's do it. You know, let's do it. And you know, one of the one, one I always point to is you know, Giancarlo Stanton. Um, who was yeah. one of the best players, one of the best players in the NFL. I mean, sorry, in the, in the major league baseball. And, uh, he was a punter for me at Notre Dame. Yeah. So, you know, and that's one of the first guys I looked at and said, Hey man, if we can get someone like him who ended up, of course, taking the route towards, towards, Whoa, wait, baseball, wait, 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 he was a punter for you at Sherman. He Oaks? was a punter for me. He was a punter. Yep. No way. Yeah. Yep. He was he a punter. He must've crushed them all. <laughs> he did, man. He hit, he was hitting five second punts without knowing what he was doing. And wow. I remember saying, if this guy, you know, at that point, obviously he wasn't a star yet, um, right. but if someone as athletic as him can do it, I started looking into other guys and say, hey, you know what? As I spoke to coaches, you have good athletes, send them to me. I'll work with them as a punter. So I think that, you know, even then it was still looked upon maybe as, I don't want to be the punter. But this yeah. day and age, man, it is. I mean, we're getting guys like that, and you yeah. know, they make their choice, and the future's there. So we're getting incredible athletes out there, you know, doing these positions. So it's pretty cool. Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. I'm happy you brought that up. And yeah. I've had people talk to me. Well, I, I talked with Corey Adams the other day, and we were okay. talking about just lawn snapping specifically. And it comes up with kicking as well or punting mm -hmm. about, you know, you're sitting in a bar or sitting at home or wherever you're at watching like Monday Night Football or something, and something goes wrong or they, they have a discussion comes up, you know. Yep. And, oh, it's, just, it's just easy. You know, it's, it's easy or it's just, you know, it's one of those things where people take for granted. But it's, it's starting to become a thing where you're right. Some serious athletes are starting to step in. And it's kind of a thing of beauty when you get someone like that. Um, yeah. Whether it's long snapping, punting, or kicking, where you have someone like, um, again, Corey brought up uh, David Bueller. Like, yeah. It's such a fun story. Absolutely. Such a great, like, such a great, yeah, that's a great, great story. example, you know, and great story. And uh, it's, it's so much fun to watch that because it is it's yeah. impressive. Yeah. Um, when you go and watch these, I, I love the pro demos at Vegas because the kicking is insane and you're right yeah. there and you can hear it. You can feel the, you can feel the ball getting, you know, leaving the yeah. foot of the kicker. It's awesome. Yeah, it's, it's changed so much. And you bring up Bueller, man. I mean, what a story. I mean, we talk about Vegas and Bueller, his, his special teams coach, I think it was Santa Ana junior college sent him and he wore football cleats and I went and said hello to him and he said, don't talk to me. I mean, literally he goes, don't talk to me. I'm not a kick. I'm not a kicker. I'm here because my coach made me come. Like literally yelled at me and, and almost like like was gonna hit me. I think for like trying to teach him how to kick. He goes, "Don't talk to him. I'm not a kicker." <laughs> you know. Um, and you know, if you fast forward to the end of that camp when college coaches could still come, and yeah. all of a sudden he had LSU, USC, Alabama coach talk to him, and all of a sudden he goes, 
hey, you know, maybe I can do this. But even then, he'd hold, he'd hold on and say, you know, I'm a safety first, yeah. and I kind of kick as well. Yeah. Even though he was knocking it out of the park and people were offering him scholarships literally on the spot. Yeah. Um, I mean, unbelievable what an athlete can do when they, when they come over to this, if, if, of course, you know, the fit's right. But, um, you know, looking in, you know, Lane Kiffin's big in the news right now. I remember the call from Lane Kiffin. You know, he was the coach at SC at the time and spoke to him on the phone and said, talk, talk about this Bueller kid. You know, and, and, uh, and that's kind of where his career began is, is a simple deal out in Vegas, comes in, doesn't want to be a kicker. Um, but I think if you talk, spoke to him today, he'd, he'd give you a different story about, you know, where his career went. Yeah. Um, played with the Cowboys. I mean, he, he got drafted. He was, he, he was drafted. Yeah. And he was one of the guys. I mean, he was one, one of the only guys ever that would kick off and then he would be personal protector on the punt team. He actually played. So and he was, you know, he was a little bit, he was a little bit loose. I mean, they even put him down. He'd kick off and, and he, yeah, he'd, yeah, exactly. I mean, and he, he and for, didn't for a while he wore a neck roll, right? At USC. Yeah. A couple of years. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And he can play some gym. He's, He's, it's awesome. Uh, it's, yeah. it's, I mean, we have, we have so many stories like that of guys that have, have, have been, uh, you know, special stories that, that yeah. uh, you know, started one place and went to a new place. And, um, and really, that's why this web series is awesome. I mean, we're going to capture these guys from the, these early stages and be able to capture these stories because there's so many of them out there. Yeah. Um, so and another story, but, you know, actually you talked about that, you know, sitting in a bar or, or, or at dinner or, I mean, I was actually sitting, I came back from vacation last Monday, uh, Rose Bowl game, right? Yeah. And I'm sitting there watching my son. Um, play soccer at uh, you know the high school level mm-hmm. and at SC games on. Of course, we got fans here in LA, and I have people behind me watching it on their iPad. You know, they have their headphones in, they're watching the game, and you hear all this cheering going on as I'm watching the soccer game. Um, and and they're talking about Matt Bormeister being one of the one of the you know one of the guys who's losing SC the game. Uh, I remember hearing, it, and of course, I want to bite my lip. You know, yeah, I, I, know I, co- oh. I, I know, I know, I coach, I know, I coach him right, and he's missed two kicks, mm-hmm. but this epic game's going on, and they're yelling, and all of a sudden they go. Oh, we're going for the win. You know, Borbush has got a chance for the win. And my, my son says something like, Dad, don't you coach him? And it, But always, this always comes up. But I bite my lip. I don't want to say yeah, that. Yeah, right. Just, yeah. There, just in, enjoying it. Um, and then he made it. You know, he makes his kick. And the, the crowd's cheering in a soccer game behind us. Like the 30 people gathered around this iPad. Um, and, and I still didn't say anything, of course. But I'm, yeah. saying, I'm, I'm, I'm posting it on my telephone. And then they're all talking about him as being this hero. So yeah, you know, the, amazing. High, the, high, the highs and lows of what these guys go through. Um, even yesterday at, at, at uh, run a new conversation and they say, you know, Matt Bormeister forever. It doesn't matter what he did. The kid won the Rose Bowl, he won the Rose Bowl for SC. He'll be remembered forever for greatness. Yeah. So, I mean, that's, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Man. That's pretty cool stuff, yeah. but it goes both ways. It does go both ways. It, it for sure does. Yeah. I was going to say uh-huh. that, uh, and it, yeah, you take the good, the bad. And it's always that cliche saying that, uh, you know, they don't know your name until you mess up, you know, but yep. kicking's a little different because kicking, you have that chance to win it. I think that's, <laughs> that's the fun part about kicking, you know? Yeah. Um, you know, the iconic, you know, putting the kicker, you know, everyone comes and puts the kicker up on their shoulders and they run around the field after the game winner and stuff like that. It's it's a lot of fun. I don't think there's anything more exciting than a game winning kick. Yeah. Um, I think maybe um, Hail Mary, but I mean, like that, when you, when you right. make a kick and you just see the kicker start running around because he knows he's the first one or the holder, it's yeah. it's fun to watch. I, it just, it's, I think the reason why it's like that is it's so tense. Um, yeah. You know, when you're playing in the rhythm of a game, every play, there's another play coming up a few seconds later. You know, game-winning kick. It seems like the whole world stops. Yeah. You know, there's a timeout called. There's the, the camera on his face for for two, three minutes. They talk about the history of that kicker, how many kicks he's made in the situation. Yeah. Like maybe it's his first time, and they they go over everything. So I think that it's kind of like time freezes. Mm-hmm. So I think that everyone that's watching is captivating because they 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 think about you know what's going to happen on this play because there's so much time in between that, and there's you know it's it's going to make or break the game. And yeah. and like I said, once once you're in that situation. Um, that's what you remember for everything else kind of goes out the window. You know, if you miss that kick, um, or you have a bad snap on that play, that's your, that's your history. That's going to be what they remember you for. Yeah. Um, and, and I have stories of my own, you know, going through it as a player, but I think that that's what makes it so captivating is that it's just, it's time freezes and, and the history is about to be written for this player. Yeah. It's, it's amazing. It's, it's, it's so unique. It's so yeah. unique. And I go back to that last frontier of football. Um, yeah. so what was the first domino that fell so to speak, with mm-hmm. you wanting to start Chris Taylor kicking, like uh, was there, was, this is easy. Like was this it? Easy, was, easy did, you, did you find? Did you? Was there someone? Was Was there anyone doing it at the time? And did you look at them and go, "Oh, that's interesting," or did you just kind of go, "No, I think this is this is something that needs to be done." Okay. Well, when I was an athlete myself and going through the combine experience, got to go to Indianapolis um, for the with the NFL Combine, and uh, you know, doing the interview process with NFL coaches, um, going to the Senior Bowl. Um, even, you know, going to the Niners when I went there, um, everyone I spoke with, because prior to that, I didn't do much. I never met other kickers. Um, it wasn't like that back then. 
it was just kind of me and my own world having a good time, even at UCLA. So that was my first chance to really meet other guys and, and talk about their experiences. Um, and you know, I didn't even think about the NFL until my junior year of college. It was not, I mean, it was, it was never in conversation. It's not what we talked about. Um, it, it was, but it was that it's like, how'd you get here on my own? How'd you get here on my own? You know, how, I stumbled upon it and that was a story. So, and you talk to other position players, they, they've had coaches, they've played yeah. since they were five years old. They've, they've gone through this, you know, they have sprint coaches, they have lifting coaches, they have all this stuff. We had nothing. So that was a big part of it. And it kind of put that, that uh, seed there, planted that seed where something's got to happen. Um, but I was still playing. So it really wasn't something I was going to do. Uh, when I came back, um, when I got cut from the Niners, my high school coach called me and he said, I got this guy named Nick Folk. Um, he's pretty good. And, you know, I don't know how to coach him. You're doing a pretty good job. I don't know if you know how to coach him. Just come back and give him someone to work with. Um, and then when I, when I started working with Nick and I said, man, this kid's pretty good, you know, and, and, you know, he was at that point in time, uh, when I first met him as a very young player, I think he was in eighth grade. I watched him develop through that process as I was still playing, doing other things. Uh, but he was my very first student. And then when it came to getting a scholarship, he had nothing. He had absolutely nothing because it hadn't really grown yet or taken off since I had come out in 95. Mm. And, and this is nearly 10 years later. Um, and I started making phone calls to the coaches I had met in, in my all American trips when I went to like, let's say the ESPN show when I went to other, you know, was recruited myself as a player. And I said, Hey, you got to give this kid a scholarship. He's really good. And they all pretty much said, no, um, only per, I got one player to person to bite, which was Arizona. And, and you look at it now and you know, Nick's gone on to be a tremendous college player drafted in the NFL, yeah. all pro 12 year career, making 3 million plus a year. Um, I mean, the story of, of one guy really in, in getting him recruited is what started this for me. Yeah. When I said this, this guy has no offers. Something's wrong. Yeah. I, I got to figure out a way to get this guy an offer. And then when I called people about Nick, they told me to create Vegas and that's how Vegas began. They said, Hey, we, we, we'd offer him, but we have never seen him. Give us a stage where we can watch these guys. And that's where Bing Vegas came to mind. I said, I got, do I got, I got, I got to do it. I got to do it. So they took a, they took a risk on Nick for me, but it, it wasn't going to happen again unless I was able to prove that these guys are all at one location doing the same thing, same footballs, same conditions, pressures on, coaches are in attendance, um, and and that's really what catapulted the whole business. But Nick Folk was was uh, was the, the driving piece behind the whole thing. Just I mean, it's like it's like imagine having a five star quarterback that couldn't get a scholarship. Yeah. I mean, but that's literally what I had. I had this guy. It's tremendous. And, and the best thing he had was, was uh, walk on offers. He was playing soccer. There was no doubt. If I didn't give him an offer, he, he was playing soccer. Mm-hmm. And really, and if he did that and I stopped doing what I did, we're not where we are today. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It'd be nothing. Nope. So you were literally just cold calling coaches. <laughs> hey, yep. I got this guy. <laughs> yeah. Remember, too, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm like a 20, you know, 22 year old kid. Right. You know, I have no, I have no, uh, coaching experience you know i have i have nothing behind me that says i'm the one that should be calling and, and making these phone calls but i did it because you know with a few contacts i had i was able to spread the word enough to get them a scholarship yeah um and you know, there's good relationships i built and, and really that's where i learned man. i, I got to build more and more relationships and, and make the right choices to make the thing grow it's yeah it's got to grow from the from the inside out so yeah there's a there's a long there's a lot of roots to, to the history of this business that's amazing and now you i'm pretty sure i'm conf- i can i can probably confidently say you have every D1 coach's number in your phone. <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah. We, we do, and if we don't, we can get it within five right. seconds. Right. So, I mean, it's, it's, that, it's, it's that's where it's at now. I don't yeah, think people but, realize that, and I don't think people realize that either, that you guys no, are we, so we, well connected with all these guys, and they come to you. We have to We have to be, but you know, the difference is, I said I called them. Yeah. You know, back then I had to call them, which is frustrating. You're a coach. You don't be called by someone constantly. I mean, every year if I called every coach, they'd, they'd, they'd hang up on me. Um, we don't call anybody anymore. They call us. That's That's the nicest part. Right. Is that you know we've done this long enough and they believe in what we do that you know Rubio and both myself we say we tell everybody if it's Division One man they're going to call us yeah. we'll place you immediately we'll place you immediately yeah um, that's what's nice so the relationship is built with all these coaches and even with the turnover the word is spread so quickly that they know immediately to come back to you know say Rubio and Vegas I mean Vegas is one of those words you say Vegas it means kicking it means punting it means snapping right um, and then we're talking about a city so yeah. I mean, that's pretty cool. Not just any city. That's a pretty cool deal. Not just any city either, yeah. Right. That's amazing. Yeah, that was so what, what, what was the, like, what's, what was the uh, idea behind putting it in Vegas? Like, why Vegas? Yeah, I mean, I actually went in. My initial thought when I created Vegas was, you know, how am I going to do this? You know, I'm, a, I'm a young man with no money. You know, how do I create a camp 
that's going to take some backing. Just hit to, the craps table this. and just hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, that wasn't it. That wasn't it. Um, but I actually took out a loan with my parents uh, to create Vegas okay. and uh, said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go for it. I think it's going to work. Um, and they said I'm crazy, but uh, and I had I had to go for it. But the reason behind Vegas was is I actually had some partners um, initially that were um, you know web based. Mm-hmm. Um, some of the some of the exposure type companies that exist, and they said I went to them first, and they said I want to create I want to create a uh, an event where kickers can come together and showcase themselves to get scholarships. And they said that's like a pretty good idea. And I said I need money, and none of them would give me the money. They would say, I'll, I'll write stories for you. I'll yeah. cover it. Yeah. But as far as getting sponsorship, we were still kickers. Yeah. So I took that, I took that leap to say, let's, let's uh, get my own money out to start it. Um, but someone gave me a good idea because I thought maybe let's do it in the Rose Bowl. Um, oh, cost cost yeah. way too much. Cost yeah. way too much. Flights are expensive coming into L.A. Holiday season. Um, L.A. is very spread out, very hard to get people into one location. Um, someone said, go to Vegas. Yeah, one lo- one hotel, one one uh, airport. It's close to every hotel. UNLV is right there, sitting outside of the airport. Yeah, every par- every parent loves Vegas. Yeah, so even if they don't want to come to kicking camp, they're going to say yes for a vacation. Yeah, um, and, and really, it's not a mecca of football. I mean, it's one of those spots that we can all kind of come to. Yeah. So I go, that's genius. Yeah. So I got on the phone and spoke to UNLV, and and at that time it was nothing like it, and it was all legal. So um, it was a no brainer, man. For us, for me, it was a five hour, four and a half hour drive. Um, and you know, I'm able to, to be in a location where my parents would go. And I, I started talking to my parents, would you go to Vegas? Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to Vegas. Let's do it. So that's how Vegas started. It was actually someone else's idea. So it was someone else's idea. I just, I capitalized. Yeah. Brilliant. And I yeah. think you, you touched upon something right there. That's really important. How much the rules and regulations have changed over oh, your 16 man. years. I, yeah. I, I don't think people realize what kind of environment it was when college coaches were able to attend. Yeah, I mean, was, the offering scholarships was, in the parking lot after it was so like. Yeah, I mean, it's <laughs> old school, man. Yeah. It's like you think you think about those movies, right? You see the yeah. movies with the, with the coaches recruiting in house and all the illegal activity, which was legal back then, I guess. But um, it was nuts. I mean, even in the very first year, you know, we had a hundred and I think twenty five kickers out there, mm-hmm. um, and I brought thirteen snappers, which where Rubio comes in just to facilitate my drills, yeah. and uh, which was nearly enough. But um, even in that year, I had twenty five coaches show up. So wow. you think about it, you got a hundred kids, 20, I mean, that's almost like one division one coach, every four kids. Yeah. Um, and in the end, the way I first did it, we broke it down and only put about 15 kids in front of those coaches. Yeah. So I had, fift- I had 15 kids kicking with 25 division one coaches watching. I mean, yeah. you couldn't get a better opportunity. And that's right. where guys like o- or Obi got a scholarship you know, yeah. on the spot. And, and I mean, it was just like a feeding frenzy because, you know, they say, hey, Chris, you did the job for us. We just show up and, and take it in. Yeah. Um, and by the last year, it was legal. We had 85 coaches. So you talked about the number of Division One programs that have 85 coaches there for, you know, maybe the top 40 guys participating. It was like heaven to these guys. Um, uh, but it did. I mean, it became a party out there. I mean, it, the coaches came more for the, for the camaraderie with each other. And, um, you know, four or five years in, it was more like, hey, Rubio Sailor, who's good? You know, we trust you now. We've seen what you guys have for five years. Yeah. So although they were out there, it was it became slightly different than it did in the first year. But, yeah, man, as, if we showed up and said, hey, Bueller's the guy, we had 15 guys go over and, and look at Bueller and offer him pretty much on the spot because, um, like I said, it was, it was a feeding frenzy. Yeah. So, and, and even though the rules have changed and we've adapted to the rules, um, you know, you got to think about it. Vegas has grown from being 125 kids to nearly 700. Yeah. Um, and, and that's, that's because coaches still take those evaluations to heart. They believe in what we do. It's 16 years of experience. And like we said, the last year they weren't watching anyway, they just went off what we said. So we were, we were able to build that confidence in them because the guys went in and they were studs. You got a DJ now, you got these amazing <laughs> banners everywhere. It's a spectacle now. It's yeah. The it's the Super Bowl a, of, of, uh, specialists. Right, it is. So we call it, and that's what that's what start what, of it of it was. Is kind of saying this is a Super Bowl for kickers. So every year, as as, as we grow, we make it bigger, yeah. uh, we make it better. We uh, attention to detail is always on the spot. Um, but you know, I, I'm not sure what else we can do now. But <laughs> we added, like I said, adding the, things like the DJ, and making it more fun for the kids, yeah. uh, creating more pressure for them. Um, and, and this year, of course, it's the web series. Yeah. So no, I, and I that's what I've always loved about you and Rubio is. Uh, just you guys' constant uh, drive to be better. 
as yeah. a company and keep providing opportunities for these kids. It's amazing. And it, yes, it's, it's, it's really funny. Like, so when I was shooting the documentary for Rubio, it was the hardest thing to do because, you know, you spend two and a half years filming, documenting what's going on. And every day it's mm-hmm. like, oh yeah, we're going to be doing this too. It's like, okay, when do I just cut it off? Right? You know, like right? this, this is like a never ending yep. thing. And that's when you guys, when you guys approached about the web series, it was like, okay, finally, now we can properly frame this thing. Dive into re- it. Yeah. And really kind of cement it forever. All right. Give us, I have a question for you. Yeah. Um, this thing has come up for me because you wrote, you did a, like you, like you just mentioned, you did a, a film on Rubio. Yeah. Um, which was based on long snapping. I and mean, we were in it slightly, the kickers, but yeah. uh, you being a long snapper yourself, obviously it made a lot of sense. Yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, with your history on this, um, my guys have asked, well, who is Gibbous? You know, what, what did he do? Um, I want to know your first experience about Vegas and, and, and actually your experience as a long snapper with Rubio because my guys don't understand kind of who you are mm-hmm. because they weren't around this whole deal. Yeah. Um, you know, why, why are you, you know, why do you have a passion about this project um, because of your experience with Rubio and me being, going through the process yourself? I mean, tell me, you know, in a minute or two, kind of what your experience was as a snapper with us. Oh, I, I can't say enough. I kind of grew up with you guys. I know yeah. Rubio did, and especially you and the whole camp. I mean, from my brother. My brother was a lawn snapper back in 2006. He started. Yeah, see, they don't know that, man. You yeah, gotta they, tell us. They don't yeah, know yeah. That. So my brother was a lawn yeah. snapper. Um, he was one of the first classes. And so I kind of got to taste the beginning a little bit. I wasn't there for the very beginning, but uh, going from there. And I wasn't a football player uh, growing up. Mm-hmm. And I uh, started playing football, and I kind of fell into lawn snapping. Actually, funny story. I have to tell you this real quick. I really want to be a punter. And I still to this day, I think I'd be a better <laughs> punter than I was a lawn snapper. I, I love punting. That's awesome. And I made fact, the wrong choice. I know. Well, uh, <laughs> well, I, I can't. I, it's hard to say now. Yeah, yeah. I did. I did do really well. But uh, I actually, my parents were like, "Well, why don't you take a lesson with Rubio and take a lesson with Sailor and see which you like better?" And I was, we were going to do that, but I did one lesson with Rubio. I was kind of like, "Okay, I'm. On, I feel safe here." So I'm Got sorry. It. I apologize. No, that's good. Uh, but no, it, it's. Uh, it was so different from football because I think, you know, you go from, come from a football practice, right? And you, and you deal with football coaches and you deal with the sport of football playing a different position. So mm-hmm. I got thrown into football my freshman year of high school. It's like I had a growth spurt. I was like six foot, 120 pounds, just gawky, didn't know what the hell I was doing. And they yeah. threw me in at linebacker. And it's an aggressive position, and it's kind of just an aggressive thing. And it's just if you're not used to that world, it's a little bit um, alarming. Okay. So going to a specialist camp was like, like, oh wow, like this kind of fits my personality a lot. And every, it's just kind of a really more focused thing. Uh, but I was seeing what was going down, and seeing uh, kids around me who, uh, at the time, and you mentioned the athlete thing going forward. Uh, mm-hmm. Seeing how you guys were able not just to be really good instructors, but you guys were building relationships with kids for life. Mm-hmm. Like I know you still go to many former players' weddings when they get when they get yep. married. You still talk got to one them. Co- got, got another one coming up. Yeah, <laughs> it, it's yep. it, it, it literally becomes a family. And as I kept going forward and getting, you know started getting the scholarship, and I went on to play in college for a little bit, then got removed from it a lot. There's still sort of this like. I don't want to say disrespect, but sort of mm-hmm. blindness to special teams that frustrates me right. because after going through it, after seeing what kickers go through um, and after seeing what the work people put in, it's right, just right. one of those things that I have to tell these stories, you know, and that's mm-hmm. my first passion is telling stories. Um, so for me, uh, you know, the documentary was really focused on Rubio and his life. I thought he had mm-hmm. an interesting life and an interesting story to tell. Mm-hmm. And, uh, but going through it, I realized there's way more to dive into about this, and it starts with the kids, really, mm-hmm. and the kids' stories. Because as you can, you you can tell. I mean, obviously, you're the first person, probably, who can uh, preach about this. There's a lot of amazing stories and a lot of characters who are Absolutely. specialists going through. Yeah. And and you know, you think about the typical ESPN documentaries like the E60s and whatnot. Um, I'm just shocked that they haven't. No one's jumped on this already mm-hmm. i really am yeah so when you, when you brought the idea of doing the web series i like i said i find okay like, finally we can finally frame this in the proper way to watch 
the process go down and watch this thing continue to grow because there's still a lot of room to grow. Yeah. For this, no, I, there's, believe it or not. There's so many stories. I mean, I've, I've, uh, you know, looking back to, I've been approached several times. Like you said, you're surprised no one's brought it up. And I think that every time it, it got to the level where we needed the backing or we needed someone yeah. to pick it up, um, yeah. the, those who were involved didn't have enough, um, I guess, passion for it yeah. to, to really work harder and take it to the next step. Yeah. Um, and that's why we're, we're happy. You know, you, we got you because, um, I think it takes someone that understands what yeah. it is to really right. show the vision properly. So we've done it. Man. I've been mic'd up. I think I did it once for three months back in 2007 or 2008. They came out to Vegas. They shot stuff. Um, it just never went to the next level because there was not enough passion there or, or yeah. no one that would back it enough to put it there. So we're, yeah. you know, we're excited to do it. Man, you talk about stories. Um, you know, I, this thing be coming up. You know, Justin Tucker is one of the most interesting stories. I mean, if you can go back in time and, and, and if we would have followed his story from being like a sophomore in Vegas, you know, loud, energetic, everyone knew about him. Um, you know, he came to top 12 camp. He sings opera in the van. Um, I mean, he was one of those guys that it, if this thing was around back then, um, you know, telling his story, I mean, we'd have a, it'd be gold, you know, and he's yeah. still exciting. Now you, you look, you follow him and what he does in the NFL, but I mean, he'd be someone I'd love to get back into this web series somehow to tell his yeah. story because he's a, obviously the best player in the NFL. I mean, he missed one kick this year and yeah. he was blocked. Yeah. Um, but I mean, there's so many great stories, like you said. So I mean, I'm, I'm excited to shoot this thing, man, because I think yeah. that the stuff we capture is going to be going to be uh, part of history, man. No, absolutely. And I and I'm, I'm yeah. happy you said I'm happy you brought up the fact that it's it's really hard to get something like this made. It's extremely yeah. hard. Um, it's yeah. hard to get people to buy in. And yeah. Um, but it's still. I mean, if you're if you're not a part of it, you just don't understand. And yep. um, it. It, it's. I'm gonna be. I, I have to be honest. It's a really hard job because you're dealing with. So we're gonna film next week. is the first Vegas, and that's gonna be our first shoot weekend. Our, our first shooting weekend. Mm -hmm. We're gonna have four cameras there. There's gonna be. Okay. Seven, there's gonna be 700 kids. <laughs> yeah. There's gonna be 700 kids, and it's gonna be over two days. And you gotta think they also have parents there that we might have to cover. So you gotta mm -hmm. think like we got four cameras to cover all this stuff within two days. And by the way, the web series won't come out until probably in the fall, most likely. Okay. But you're gonna, we're going to do stuff that keeps you uh, engaged throughout the season because we're going to be shooting so much. And it's going to happen, be happening in real time. So when you bring it up and you start to describe to people, and, it, and they always – I actually was actually in a meeting with someone. They, they were asking me what, what the series is about. I'm, and they still weren't grasping. I'm like, honestly, it's like Hard Knocks meets American yep. Idol. Right. And yep. and they kind of laughed. I'm like, you laugh, but just watch. You're gonna see this go down. You're gonna see the process. You're gonna see the selection process. You're gonna see these kids' stories. You're gonna you're gonna watch these kids who are sophomores at certain times and watch them grow over and that's another exciting thing about this. It's not gonna stop. It's not just one series, like one season. It's gonna keep going. So imagine being a sophomore coming to Vegas, getting a little bit of screen time, and then two years later he's one of the top guys in you know, he's going to be one of the top 12 members his senior year and he goes on to have an amazing career. We're going to have that all documented, you know? Yeah, that's awesome. It's, it, that's that's yeah, such it's, a cool it's thing. Unbelievable. It's almost like yeah. boyhood. It's like the web series version of boyhood, yeah. you know, just filming <laughs> constantly over this, you know, you know, over these years is going to be so much fun. And not only that, yeah, but, it's... you know, there's going to be kids who aren't, that won't make it top 12. It's just the reality mm -hmm. of it. They won't be one of the 45 kids that you select. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't mean we won't cover them. They won't get some yeah. kind of exposure from this. I mean, everyone wins from this. Yeah. I think in reality, like, I try to break it down as far as numbers for people. So for the two days you're going to be shooting, okay, we will probably film with, between four cameras. We'll probably film over a thousand hours worth wow. of footage. It just, it just how much we're going to be filming and all the stuff we have to, uh, you know, capture. Uh, so you kind of multiply all that up over a, oh, you know, a camp season. That's a lot of stuff. It's a lot of material. And we're going. We're not going to sit on it. We're gonna. We're gonna do stuff with it. So it's. Yeah. It's more than just a web series. It's a. It's a full on just. Uh, you know, like this. This podcast. This. This video podcast is so much fun to do, and we're gonna keep doing it. I mean, we're not yeah. gonna stop. You know, once the campaign's over, we're gonna keep going with it because it's such a great way. So the way people can access, you know, to really grasp the world and people and the environment of it. You know, mm -hmm. I. I'm excited. It's kind of this yeah. open-ended, yeah, awesome. you know, project. Yeah, so, I mean, 
you'd be surprised, Gibbs. I mean, we, we've had, you know, when this idea came up and we first posted it, you know, all the guys that made top 12 last year, the years prior, I said, man, I wish this was around when, yeah. my, when my series was. I mean, I, we missed out. You know, why did you wait so long? Yeah. Um, so I think that, the you know, the young, you said, the, the, the current, you know, 2018s and guys that are younger that are going to be a part of this in the future are just, um, I mean, they're ecstatic. I mean, they don't, they don't know what to expect yet. So I think that uh, with each piece we give them, they're going to be more and more excited about it. But I mean, I'm, I'm thrilled. I mean, I'm thrilled. I can't wait for Vegas. Uh, I can't see the stuff you can't wait to see the stuff you put out. Yeah. Um, I mean, there's, there's so much opportunity in it, so um, yeah. it can go in any direction and, and I'm excited to see it too, man. It's, it's going to be sick. It's going to be nice. Oh, it's going to be awesome. And it's, it's, it's fun because it's, we're calling a web series right now because that's what it's going to be for the time being. Mm-hmm. But there's, there is no, uh, you know, there's no reason why this wouldn't go on TV, you know, go to some place yeah. and platform. He wants to do it. I, I, I'm confident, not so much, I'm not saying I'm confident as, as far as my, my, my crew's ability to make a good web series of the people I hire, but I'm more confident in just the material itself, which you guys bring to the table. People will be interested of it. You know, if you talk to enough people, if you walk up to them and go, you know, um, you, you walk up to them and just start asking questions or just bring it up, they're genuinely you know, curious. Because like I said, football is such a yeah. big sport and this is still just an unknown part of it. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, you know, absolutely, man. I think that, uh, um, like we talked about those stories of the, the game winning kicks, the game missed kicks. And, um, I mean, even you look at, you know, one bad snap, um, you know, in one game, it's remembered forever. I mean, yeah. that's just the way it is. Um, you know, national championships are won and lost because of it. You have, you have NFL games that, that, uh, you know, people, people spend millions of dollars scouting, evaluating, drafting, you know, we talk about, the quarterbacks, receivers, all year long. There's television shows dedicated to all this stuff, and and then you go to it comes down to one second where that snap, that kick, you know, is is worth millions of dollars on what they've done. Um, so to be able to capture these stories early on, and then you know look down the road and see you know one of these guys we followed be in that situation where they've got millions of eyes on them. Um, I mean, it's gonna be it's gonna be unbelievable. So I think that uh, I'm excited. I'm really excited about it. Um, and like you said, it's it's one of the biggest things you say is the stories, right? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, the stories of of uh, um, the relationships that, that you built, you know, with us and, and why you're doing this project. Um, and, and, you know, our all of our, our kickers and our punters and our snappers, um, it's like a fraternity. I mean, as yeah. they grow up with us from, yes. from seventh, eighth, ninth grade. Um, you know, they, they, they get to know one another. The families hang out. I mean, they're tailgating together at college games. Um, you know, they're part of, like you said, you know, their guys are getting married. Aaron Perez, one of my leading pun stars getting married this week. Yeah. We're all going to be there. I mean, all these guys we talk about, we're all together. Um, it's, it's a lifelong experience. Um, so this shoot, um, and what we're doing, I think is just going to capture all that. I mean, I think that the outside world of football and even in sports, um, it has to be intrigued by it because it's, it's like no other. I mean, yeah. quarterbacks compete, you know, linemen compete. But there's so many of them. There's so much going on that those deep relationships really aren't built. Um, maybe a few here and there, but from what I've talked to, it's not like this. Yeah. You know, we look at my first class. All those guys, Obi and, and Aaron Perez, and you know, all those guys. They're still. I mean, they're best friends. Yeah. Joe Houston. These guys are best friends. Yeah. Um, and, and that doesn't exist in other worlds. So I'm I'm excited to see it captured. Um, like I said, we always say Team Sailor and Team Rubio. That's what this is about, right? You know, and, and it's team specialists. Um, you know, all of us coming together to build something. So, um, you know, we talked about it, man. We, we 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 bring the support of the family in. Uh, we got you, you you on board. It was a long snapper yourself. Um, I'm I'm excited to see what all of us together can really do. So, um, yeah, it's, it's awesome. And that that's another thing that excites me is and and you know it, by the nature of the documentary when I was making it, I had to kind of keep it under wraps. But this is one of those things where it's I'm open up to everyone. I've talked to so many people the past couple of weeks, just picking their brain, you know. And I'm 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 open to people talking, telling me what they want to see in the web series because that's the most yeah. important thing. Is I'm sharing, I'm not just sharing my story. I'm not just sharing the kids' stories. This is, you know, you talk about the past kids who are jealous, you know, who are jealous about not having this back when they're going through the yeah. camps. Well, you know, what do they what do they wish they had, you know, and what's what's the best way we could capture all this. Because that's the most important thing is not, yeah. I'm just not representing Salem and Rubio. I'm representing thousands of kids uh-huh. who have been through, you know, have gone through your program, have gone through you, and have gone on to college. It's 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 much bigger than you know, you Rubio or I, and that's that's yeah. another exciting thing about it. Yeah, even I mean, you talk about those guys not knowing what to expect. Me and Rubio don't know what to expect. You know, <laughs> we 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 know the stories, but 
you know, we're so busy in our daily life with, with our own families and our business. I mean, this is something that we're excited to have you on board because, I mean, everything's going to be a surprise to us too. Um, and it's exciting. And so I say it's kind of like Christmas, man. Yeah. Everything, everything, everything you put out is like another present to us because it captures what we've worked all these years to kind of create. Mm-hmm. Um, and we're going to show that we're going to show the world. Um, yeah. and, and, you know, when I, when I thought of this, when this, when this idea came to me and I called Rubio on it, um, you know, the, the biggest thing that I, I looked at is every year in this business, you know, what gap do we need to fill? What's the next step towards elevating um, our guys to new level? And, and, and to be honest, everything I've set out to do from the time I started my business, I've accomplished. Yeah. And I sat there and I said, I got to start over. I got to write new goals. You know, from you know the sailor from the sailor award, something I wanted to create, yeah. and the Rubio award, and that came to fruition. Um, to running university camps, you know, I work with we work with the University of Alabama and Nick Saban. Yeah, you know, who can say that? Um, creating Vegas, I mean, that's something that I knew I had to create from from the early on, and I was able to capture that in three to four years um, to get the scholarship numbers up to over twenty guys. I mean, shoot, we hit that goal in in a few years. I mean, now it's up. You know, we're over sixty a year. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's like, you know, what's the next step? You know, what's different now that, that wasn't there 16 years ago? And, and obviously, it's the inclusion of the Internet, um, these, these awesome, web, these awesome uh, sports shows that are on TV. Mm-hmm. So I'm sitting there watching literally hard knocks. I go, man, we're more interested in this. <laughs> right. You know, we have more stories that, that – and, and everyone watches it. My kids are sitting there, and they're dialed in. They're excited for the next episode. Um, and it's not you, – you watch the show like that. It's not about the star. Yeah. You know, you watch hard knocks. The best stories are about the guys you don't really know much about. Those yeah. are the ones you want to know. Is the guy gonna, is the guy gonna make it? Is he gonna get cut? Yeah. You know, um, those are the, those are the those are the exciting yes. stories. And and really in kicking, that's it's all about that. There's so much stuff yes. behind the scenes. We we see the success stories, right? Mm-hmm. So I mean, you know, someone gets a scholarship, we're excited. We post it. Everyone's excited. The family's excited. You have 45 kids that are pissed off it wasn't them. Yeah. You know, that's the exciting stuff. And then yeah. where's where's the where does the next path go from there? So right. really for me when I'm thinking about this series is this is the next step, I think, above and beyond the goals I set, you know, 16 years ago, that's gonna get more kids scholarships. Yeah. It's gonna put us on a higher level. That's gonna get um, more guys drafted as opposed to be becoming free agents, which still Look at the snapping side; it's not happening yet, yeah. and so we got to take us into a new level. So I, I really believe that showing the world what this is about and the in depth behind the scenes stuff is is going to take kicking, punting, and snapping just to a whole other level. So um, that's yeah. a big point for me. Is I'm excited about that, man. I'm excited to see you guys genuinely, professionally, uh, be real with kids and yeah. about you know why they weren't good enough to be in the top twelve. Yeah, you know, and and that's the thing I admire about you guys as well is you guys can really at this point rest on your laurels. Like I said, every college coach now will just come turn to you and go, "Who's your guys?" And you can yep. be very just. You could just that I can see that being a very tempting thing. Yeah. Just kind of go, well, these kids come to us. I, I say these guys, but you guys still are very much in tune, very much on top of making sure you guys evaluate everyone equally, you know, yep. with, um, biasly, and just kind of making sure. Your information is correct because, I mean, you could talk about uh, so many reasons why. I think a lot of it has to do is you guys have built a reputation and you guys work very hard to keep that intact. Yeah. Um, and yeah. it makes it make sure you keep those relationships, you know, going. But I'm really excited yeah. about kids, you know. It's yeah. kind of messed up. But the emotional, it, it, right? Yeah, the it's emotions. really emotional. Yeah. But, I mean, the emotion is real. Mm-hmm. So, you know, whether it's captured or not, I mean, the reality is it's happening every day. Mm-hmm. You know, um, you know, a kid comes to camp, wants to be rated a certain way, and he's not there. You know, what do you do? Do you work harder to, to, to get better? Or do you say it's our fault? You know what yeah. I mean? We're, we're, we're telling you the truth. Yeah. So I think to capture the real emotion is going to – you know, there's so many great, like I said, great stories of kids that were told the truth that worked their tail off to change that, to yeah. make it different. And the, some of those guys are the best guys we have now. Yeah. So I think that, like you said, these honest stories and us being real with the kids and, and the real personal relationships because we care about them, um, it's going to show really well. Um, and, and the ones that take it the right way, that story is even more special because yeah. now we have a real story of a kid who came in and was, you know, whether he was, you know, in, in the middle of the pack or, or slightly ahead. And you can see his growth and the work ethic, perhaps from being a sophomore to a junior to a senior throughout this web series. I mean, those sort of stories are gonna be so inspirational to other kids to really show that, that, um, you know, there's something here. There's, there's work to be done to create, um, these goals to really hit the end. You know, there's, there's always a path to get there. So, you know, number one in the country is great. You know, we all know about him. We all know he's getting a scholarship. You know, it's, it's easy to talk about Brandon Ruiz going to Alabama and, 
and um, playing in the Army, U.S. Army game this weekend. Yeah. That's easy to talk about. It's the kid that's sitting there that's, that's teetering between not making it and making it that it's going to be awesome to capture because there's, there's way more of them than there is a number one in the nation. So right. and, and it's it, it, really the goal is to hopefully to motivate kids. Yeah. Um, you know, that hard work's going to pay off because there's so much opportunity here. Yeah. Yep. I cannot wait. I cannot wait. Yeah. It can be a lot of work, but I mean, it's worth it. It's totally worth it. Yeah. I don't know what to expect, man. I'm, I'm, a, uh, you know, I'm, a, I'm excited to see where it goes too, because just like you said, there's so many ways you can go with it. And, um, you know, me myself haven't watched, you know, and, and not being, you know, necessarily in, in the depth of, of, uh, Rubio, you know, the, the, the movie, um, when I saw that thing, I was blown away. You know, I was blown away and I was, I was excited to see, you know, if you could do that, you know, what could you possibly do with this? Mm-hmm. Um, and, and I think that, uh, all these kids, these kids are in for a treat. You know, they don't, they don't know what to expect either because a lot of my kickers, they haven't seen Rubio, you know, they, it's snapping right. not necessarily their, their thing. Right. And, um, I encourage them to watch it. I think them watching that, like, I, like for me, um, you know, Rubio's one of my best friends. So I, I got to see the in-depth stuff I didn't know about Rubio. Yeah. Um, I, I encourage my kickers to go out and actually watch that movie because it's going to excite them about this one. Um, cause this is only gonna get bigger and better from here, man. I mean, well, you're, more, you're more experienced and, and, right. and you know, you know more about this now, you know right. what you're looking for. I mean, it's going to be, it's going to be amazing. Right. Well, I'm, I'm glad you say that. I, cause I, I kind of, I, it, it was a fun project to work on. You know, you said I'm way more experienced now. It was fun mm-hmm. to do cause it told a story. It was fun because we got to dive into your story too and how you guys met, yeah. you know, that's such a great story. And that's probably one of my favorite parts of the documentary. Uh, yeah. but this is going to be totally different. Yeah, I, 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 I cannot wait. I have a lot of stuff on my sleeve, uh, a lot of stuff we're planning on doing that. Uh, yeah. Um, that's just different from any sports show, and that's another thing I wanted. I wanted to, I want to accomplish that is what can we do that other sports uh, reality shows have not touched on or have not done mm-hmm. or um, what's something we could do differently, and then it's gonna be, it's gonna be interesting. It's gonna Give be us interesting. another another question for you. Let so. it rain. You know, you're looking into Vegas, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, obviously, you said you have set, you have 700 athletes. Yeah. Okay. Um, that's a ton of kids, and, and really, if, if I look at them, I know these kids already. I, mm-hmm. I have a good idea for probably about 70 percent of them. I've met here or there, talked mm-hmm. to their parents. Um, a lot of them have the same story. How are you going to go about? You know, in your first, like you said, you're going to get thousands of hours of footage. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, because my kids have asked, well, who gets covered? You know, who who are the lucky ones that get the opportunity? And whenever I watch a show. I wonder how they can meet an American Idol. You know, how did they find Carrie Underwood on the farm and decide that was an interesting story? Um, and that's something that we don't necess- we're not good at. You're good at that. Mm-hmm. You know, how are you going to start this process of of identifying who may be interesting in Vegas? I mean, who? How how does that start? How does that work? Uh, well, it starts. It started back in August uh, okay. or September when you guys first approached me. The first thing I did was hopped on your guys' uh, 2017 class. Mm-hmm. And I hopped on your rankings, and I looked at everyone's profile. Then I went to their social media, and okay. I have a team of writers um, and producers who literally their their main job is just to go and research kids. Well, so when awesome. you talk, so when you talk about like college coaches doing this, we thought, okay, if college coaches are doing this, we should be doing this as well, right? So I have sitting over on top of my shelf, and I won't show it because I I don't want to, you know, still, yeah, yeah. Uh, but it's. It's a big folder of just profiles on every kid, interesting things they say and whatnot. (laughs) So literally on the day for Vegas, and obviously we talk to you guys as well. We'll, we'll, we'll We have meetings with you and we say, hey, this kid, tell me a little more about him. And you guys, like you said, either you know a lot about him or you still – you've seen him a couple times maybe. Um, Mm -hmm. And we'll also talk to your instructor because now you guys have instructors going out around the country too. So it's just yeah. a lot of research, but on the day I will alert, you'll you'll see me walking around. I'll have a bunch of papers with me. Actually, I think I'm I'm, I'm trying to get an iPad because there's so much paper, uh, okay, to to put it. But literally, I can walk up to someone and I know when they're going to be on, and I can go, listen, that kid might be interesting. Um, so I tell the cam, you know, camera operators, hey, there's you know these five kids are you know, kind of watch them, you know, see what they're going on. Not only that, but you can kind of test this too. You can feel. Mm-hmm. You can feel a kid's presence at a camp, how they are going to react to everything, how, uh, how, how, if they're scared, if they're yep. nervous, or if they're confident and they're just ready to crush stuff. And you can feel it. It's not a secret. You can see it. So when, and yep. that's another thing. It's just part of being able to capture, being able to capture at that point yeah. and being in the right well, place at the right time. Having said that, I mean, I didn't, never even thought about it, but I, I, me as an evaluator, I do the same thing. Because yeah. I can hear the I can hear the parents behind me, 
That's another um, thing too. Yes. I can I can see I can see the kids talking to one another, hear them. They don't think I hear them, but they're talking as, as friends behind me. Yeah. Um, whether it be about this, who has the highest score, or about you know they went and they didn't do very well, or they went and they crushed it. But all those things actually play a role in how I evaluate kids too. You hear yeah. someone that doesn't have the confidence, um, or is complaining, or you have the overbearing parent. I mean, there really is so much going on there. So that's the cool stuff too. It's not like you said. It's not maybe about you know how many kicks they make or how many points they score. It's how do they react to it. Or how did they feel about it coming into it? Yeah. Um, and then capturing. I mean, I talked today actually to two of my guys who were coming, my my uh, my elite kids, um, and you know, I said, "When you guys got to win it?" And they're like, "Well, yeah, we're going to win it. You know, we're coming to do that." And I remember in each year, you know, looking at the NFL guys, I remember them sitting there talking about you know defeating the young guys or or stepping up doing this. So there's like that confident side, and there's the new kids that haven't been that are maybe eighth graders or ninth graders. So yeah, that's that's pretty cool, man. I didn't even think about that, but but. Uh, well, it's a lot of it. to see that side and, stories. And, and and like it's cool too because I I, I I can think of three kids when I was when we have camps and you know the snappers would come together with kickers. Yep. And they were uh, a little overconfident, to put it yeah. politely, you know. And everyone just everyone just hates you know everyone just Hate starts them. To, yeah hates them for it, and especially yep. when they're really good. If they're the number yeah. one kid and they know it and they're just not and it affects everyone around them. Yeah. So, and that's the exciting thing about it. You look like look at hard knocks. You look at um, not so much hard knocks, but maybe like the uh, quarterback camp, uh, uh, elite eleven. Sure. It's a very aggressive. Uh, who's the biggest, baddest, toughest? Blah blah. This is not really the same thing. This is completely mm-hmm. different. It's a it's a lot of psychology behind it. And as a For filmmaker, sure. as someone who loves covering characters, mm-hmm. it is so much fun watching that go down. And like yeah. I said, it's just being in the right place at the right time and, and watching everyone react to that. You know, it, yeah. it, it, it's just so well, much. I'll, man, I'll throw it out there right now to you. Chris Dunn, who is number one 2018, um, you know, he's not a big guy. He's probably about 5'8", 160 pounds. Uh, he actually won Vegas last time in May. Uh-huh. Um, he's been number one since day one, already committed to NC State on full scholarship, coming out of North Carolina, made top 12 last year. Um, and he's one of those guys. I mean, he's yeah. extremely confident. And I think that it creates an atmosphere because you have this guy who – it reminds me of Nick Folk back in the day. Expects to win, is going to win, and if he doesn't win, he's, he's legitimately upset. Um, it's not just, oh, I just didn't win today. I mean the guy's legitimately upset, but that energy is live. Yeah. You know, people are around him. They want to knock him down. Yeah. Um, and he wants, to, he wants to stay on top. I mean there's a real – even though he's committed, he doesn't care. He, he's yeah. there to continue to dominate. Um, there's a lot of guys like that. But yeah. he, he will be a very polarizing person because everyone watches him um, and he doesn't care. Mm. He wants people to watch him, and he wants to win. And he comes to every camp I have just because he, he wants to dominate. And he's one of those personalities that will rub you either you know, the right way, hey, what, a, what an example, or the wrong way because that, that kid's so confident. You know, why, does he, why doesn't he pipe down a little bit? Not yeah. that he talks, not that he talks, but uh, it's in his action. You can see it. Yeah. You can see it in his face. The kid yeah. is – he's a dominating force. Yeah. So it was, that's cool. It's, it, in, in the, I mean just imagine hypothetically you're mm. in a competition setting. And this quiet kid, no one's heard of, comes in and flat out dominates and beats him in you know in a, in a drill or you know actually in the final or something like that. That like that's an amazing story right there, and that that does yeah. ha- that happens all the time. Yeah, it happens for all sure. The time. Can, yep. So, it, it, and I, I'm and the uh, the structure of the top twelve camp, the the process of it, the selecting the twenty kids for January. And then selecting twenty kids in May and having five wild card selections. Mm-hmm. That's a lot of fun too, because there's gonna be kids who might not make it the first time around and either they get the they get the fire second chance. And they get the second chance for sure. Mm-hmm. And there may be kids who were on the cusp both times and just yep. don't make it. Yeah. I can't tell you you know how hard it is and I and I think back to you know all the years, because there's always gonna be the fringe kids, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, look at, and I, I always think about it like, you know, when they talk about the college playoff in football, mm-hmm. right? Alabama was clear, but yeah. was it going to, was it going to be Washington or Penn state or Michigan or, and they sit there and they debate these things for hours and yeah. hours. And, that, and that's how I feel when I look at my, when we select the top 12, it's like, man, I got 20 kids here. How do I narrow this down to 12 kids? Mm-hmm. And those separating factors at, at the very end is, is, uh, you know, it's really, me and Rubio always did it, but no one else saw that process was yeah. done. Maybe how how close that number thirteen kid yeah. was to making the twelfth kid. Yeah. And I look back to some stories of of 
remembering those select that selection process uh -huh. and then by making that choice how it changed their lives yeah. you know how it changed that number 12 or 13 kids lives for the future so it's going to be exciting too to capture kind of that those fringe players that are right there you know the selection process to pick those 20 guys because it's not easy man i mean no there's so many so many great players um and then you know some kids get pissed off and they won't come back in may right you know i didn't make it i deserve to make it um you know we can't help that and some kids say i'm gonna come back and make it next time you yeah. know and so second chance guys would be <laughs> be a pretty cool story too yeah, I can't wait. So I have to ask, what, now that you're 16 years into this, you are in an amazing spot. I mean, mm -hmm. it, you guys are li pretty much the go-to guys when it comes to specialist recruiting. Mm -hmm. uh, what's your biggest challenge now? Um, you know, I, I would say the biggest challenge for me is, is, uh, is kind of staying with the kids. Um, you know, we're dealing with, for the most part, anywhere from 11, 12-year-olds to – you know, excluding the professionals, because there's so few of them, you know, 22, 23 year olds, you know, when I was 22, 23, it's pretty easy to identify. Um, like you said, we're about relationships with the kids. So with every year we get older, the kids don't. So how do you maintain a relationship with these kids when, when you're a different person every year, right? They don't change. We right. change every year. Right. So we used to be, we used to be their friend and now we're almost like could be a father figure. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's, it's crazy to us. Yeah. Um, and it wasn't that way. So I think it's, it's, it's trying to identify, trying to, to stick within how we identify with the kids. Cause it's such a big part of what we do. Mm -hmm. Um, and then also as the, as the media world changes, the social media changes, you know, how to stay on top of those things, because, um, that is a big part of it is continuing to get the kids the exposure. And that's why this is a big deal, I think, to show our personalities and what we do behind the scenes. Um, but I, I think the on the field stuff, the coaching is easy. Yeah. We have more experience. We're better coaches. I mean, we have full confidence in what we teach. The relationship with college coaches is easy because mm -hmm. we have more and more every year. And as things turn over and maybe a defensive a special teams coach becomes a head coach, that's just easier for us. Right. Then there's a, a new team's coach that he tells the team's coach to contact us. So us keeping and building relationships at the, with the college coaches, that's easier. But it's letting the kids know that we're still there for them. As we continue to get older and grow in the business, that 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 I find the most challenging at times is, you know, I still feel 25 sometimes. Um, so I'm myself with the kids, um, but there's times when I have a younger player. It's like you know, and, and things are going on where I need to be more like a father figure, like I am with my own children. Yeah. So I think it's 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 understanding the relationships and, and keeping them current as we continue to grow. Um, and I think that's why the family is huge because we can bring in the young guys. We can bring back. Um, you know, the players that have been through the process who are 23, 24 years old that do identify kids with kids differently. So you give them a, a full range, a full spectrum of people they can identify with that help them grow. It used to just be us, right? Yeah. Um, now we have, we have the whole thing. We have yeah. the older, we have, we're the older mentors. We have the younger professionals. You know, we have guys like, like, you know, Kai Forbath. We have guys like, uh, you know, Jeff Locke that are going to be coming back, you know, professionals who are able to show a different perspective. Um, you have guys like Blair Walsh. You know, Blair Walsh has a tremendous story. You know, yeah. high, the highs and lows. I mean, these these guys being around kickers at all levels, those relationships is really what I think brings full confidence to our players. I mean, it's it's kind of and the challenge is is rewarding because we're giving the kids even more than we were able to give before. Yeah, yeah. I I was not expecting that to be honest. Really? No, I wasn't. What what, 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 what were you expecting? Um, I, I honestly I was expecting you to talk about your competitors. Other guys running specials camps, uh, and I yeah, and, I, and, I, and not to you know, I'm not trying to call anyone out. I just feel like because it's, um, but you see it. You see some kids or some guys who are former players. They try to do mm -hmm. what you do, and they don't realize oh, yeah. like, oh, this is one really really hard. Two, yeah. you have spent years doing it and building relationships with coaches yep. that you can't build overnight and just say, hey, I'm the guy. Um, right. I was, I, think I, was, I, I thought maybe you'd go that way, but the, that's so funny. The, well, it's the, not. The, the, the problem is it's not a challenge, and the reason why it's not a challenge is because we've talked about it. I mean the number of specialists that need help is growing. I mean every year there's more of them. Mm -hmm. So you know, when, I, when, I, when I first started, I had to go out and find those 50 kids that wanted to kick. Yeah. I had to go 50 for 50. Yeah. You know what I mean? Now I can go out and even if I'm 50%, I have way more than I can handle, yeah. um, and, and, and that's, that's the part. But the unfortunate part, I think, is that like you just said, we have the experience. So if if players are going to other startup companies that don't quite get what it takes, um, and, and like I said, we grew this thing from the inside out, and, and really, um, it's a it's a uh, 
word of mouth business. Mm -hmm. It's not a pretty website. It doesn't help. Yeah. Um, if you don't have the backing and the growth, I mean, we grew slowly. We yeah. grew slowly to get where we are, and it was a step by step process. Um, I mean, hundreds have come and gone. Hundreds. You know, they may have done well for six months, but then the parents realize there's nothing behind it. There, there's nothing here that we're getting out of it. Um, and and we were able to give the the full um, um, package of coaching mm -hmm. and exposure and real relationships and real opportunity elsewhere. Um, and and um, that's a huge part of it. So there's very, very few companies out there that have anywhere close to what we're able to accomplish because we created everything. Yeah. We, we created rankings. We created Vegas and exposure events. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we, we were the first to do everything. Everyone else has just copied us along the way. Yeah. Um, and we just continue to adapt to, to stay ahead of the game, what we do. Um, and, and I almost feel bad for, for startup companies who do it the wrong way. And I feel bad for the kids that go there. Yeah. Because they're not getting what they need to get. Yeah. Um, so, and that's why we're growing with from within, right? I mean, we're mm -hmm. like a tree. I know yeah. me and Ruby are sitting at the top, but we have layers underneath us now of players that we trusted, but we couldn't do that right away. Right. You know, a, a guy like like Obi, for example, you know, 10 years ago, I couldn't trust him. He was a young kid who, who didn't know much about it. But now he's done it for 10 years. And to be honest with you, I mean, Obi's a better instructor than 95% of the guys out there running their own camps. Yeah. So I mean, we, have the la we have the layers to support it. Um, there's enough specials out there for us to never worry about having enough business and clientele. Um, we're, just, we're, we're hopeful we're able to, to reach all the kids, and that's why this is a huge deal because we truly know, and this is not a, sale, a salesman's pitch, we, we know what we're able to provide, right. which we know others can't. Yeah. So you know, money invested and spent with us is, 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 is really where um, there's going to be some sort of uh, uh, means to an end. I mean, they're going to get what they need to get and be told the truth. So this will yeah. really capture that. Yeah. No, like I said, it's a no-brainer. So, yeah, it's no brainer. So I have to ask a really difficult question. I'm gonna put you on the spot. You got it. Who in your mind are the top five kickers? I guess we have to do punters too, but top five okay. kickers and punters. We'll put them together. To we'll put them together. Five. Okay. We'll put them together. Okay. I can do that. You can. Okay. Is that? Yeah. Sure. Now, are we talking about what they were able to become, or when I evaluated them at a base level? Like, are we talking about how, how good? How good? Because it's a different answer. Yeah, you're so right. Certain guys developed. I mean, right now, naming the top five is easy. You name the top guy, five guys in the NFL that are that are out there. I mean, Dan Bailey, mm -hmm. Justin Justin Tucker, you know, Brian Anger, um, Brian Anger. Anger. Oh. Th th those are those are those are easy choices. Um, I I think the interesting question is who who were the best guys in high school? You know, if you yeah, look at all so the number too. ones in, in the past, I mean, I think that's the question. I've been asked this question actually quite often. Um, Justin Tucker is one of them. Yeah, you know, he he he's someone. If I look at the full range of what he's been able to do, um, he came in, he was outstanding off the bat, caught my eye right away. First impression was phenomenal. Look at the confidence factor. I mean, this kid was competing with seniors um, and he was very vocal about it, but in the right way. Um, kids gelled around him. He was a very um, polarizing guy that was out there. Um, you know, he came in, made a Venelite right away as a sophomore, made top 12 as a junior, made top 12. So you look at his body at work, um, he's really dominated since day one. Um, and then we talk about his personality. You look at top 12 camp. He's one of those guys everybody remembers. Um, and he's still that personality. I mean, he's got tremendous sponsors in the NFL. You look him up on YouTube. He's singing opera at, at, at different things. And I think he speaks, you know, how many different languages he speaks. Um, he, he's really the full package. You think about, you know, what an athlete is, what a specialist is, and how he's dominated since day one. Um, next guy I'll bring up is a guy you've never heard of. Uh, maybe you have, but no one else has. Troy Van Blarkham. Yes. So, Troy Van Blarkham. Um, Amazing talent, big kid, athletic, six foot three, you know, two hundred pounds, star wide receiver. Um, you know, he he at that point in time in two thousand four, we had a we bad idea. I created two Vegas events. I thought, hey, Vegas one was great. No one no, no, probably remembers about this. I made a Vegas, but it was in Miami. So we okay. actually had an East Coast and a West Coast, and it was a it was a poor choice. Because <laughs> um, we split our we split our kids and we had two regional camps, you know, yeah. young, young, young and dumb, right? Yeah. But either way, if you look at it, there's six events, right? You have kickoffs, field goals, punts, mm -hmm. two locations. He had six events. He went to both locations. He won five of the six. Wow. Hundreds upon hundreds of kids, and he won all three in Miami, and he won two of the three in LA. Just crushing it, crushing it. And another guy, when you we well, talk well, about hold on. Well, real quick, we need to talk about how hard that is. It's how impossible. Hard, it's it, how hard that because I I've never been done again. Yeah, I was going to say, because I did, I did, I was in four, three or four Vegas events. I had a chance to win one, um, mm -hmm. 
and it's hard to win just one. One. Insanely hard to win one. Yeah. You can't miss a kick. You can't miss a, miss hit one ball. I mean, yeah. like, I mean, that's like Fletcher, right? Fletcher won, I think, twice for yeah. snapping. That's it's so hard to do. He yeah. won five or six events yeah. in one year. It's almost, it's, I can't think of another guy who's ever won two. That's, that's like Jordan. It's Jordan Spieth esque. You know, yeah, it's, it's right? just complete dominance. You know, it's, and he had and he had that attitude. And you know, he got ended up getting a full ride to SC. Uh-huh. Um, he's one of those guys we speak about quite often because we talk about you know once you're once you're in this position and you're a star, yeah, playing other positions, yeah, um, and and the risk factor. He's one of those guys that got hurt playing wide receiver. Yeah, so he never was able to get to his full level of of uh, back to where he was. But I mean, there's no doubt he's in my top five. Um, Brian Anger is another one. Yeah. Brian Anger is a, is a guy um, you talk about like Tucker, third round draft pick, um, uh, the highest we've ever had taken from our specialists. But uh, it was from the start. You know, tall, yeah. gangly guy, um, kicked the very first lesson I ever had him. And he started kicking. I go, man, this, this kid's not very good. And then at the end, we punted a few balls. I go, hey, listen, I call his mom over. I go, he's never kicking again. Like, he's not good. And he's, a, he's got <laughs> tremendous potential as a punter, man. <laughs> And it just skyrocketed. I mean, I remember him, um, you know, just dominating Vegas and was one of those guys that every coach was sitting around and just, you know, knocked the socks off. And he's one of the only guys I've ever had on a clock at six seconds. So um, wow. and it's unheard of. I think Ray Guy is the only other one they've ever said. Six yeah, six. you got, I think people need to check that. Like, I actually put six seconds on their iPhone and it's, and re- it's, it's almost ever. I've seen five, six, five, seven. You've seen it at, at the yeah. um, at, at the at the demos, but yeah. six seconds is a whole nother level. I mean, that's it's off the Up charts. There. And obviously, he's he's had. I mean, he's he's had a long career. He's he's one of the top guys. You don't hear much about punters. Yeah, everyone knows Tucker. No one knows who Brian Anger is. Right. Um, it's it's kind of like a long snapper. Punters are kind of the same way. Yeah. Um, he'd be another one. Um, gosh, you know, Dan Bailey being the most accurate in NFL history. He was another two-time top 12 member. Uh, an interesting story. He actually came with goggles his first lesson uh, to Vegas. He looked like, and you know, this guy's going to do nothing. Uh-huh. Um, he wore like flats to kick in on the field, which no one really wears flats to kick in. Uh-huh. Um, and and he, ca- he, he got our attention right away. But even then, like kind of the eyeball test didn't match up. He had Tucker, yeah. this guy who was just, you know, a loud personality. And you had Dan Bailey who came at kind of like this and, and didn't make a peep. Um, yeah. And But he was good. You know, and he he kind of stepped up, and I I wouldn't put him in my top five per se, but very interesting story. He's yeah. a guy that you know if you you combine you, you you compare and contrast those two guys. Um, another one would be Ryan Lux. Ah, oh, name I haven't heard of. Yep, um, and and because I decided to go in a new direction, I think um, it, it's before we had a big uh, input in the NFL. Mm-hmm. Um, but Ryan Lux is about he's about six three, two hundred twenty pounds. Um, you know the you know the lights at Notre Dame High School. Yeah, you kick at sometimes. Yeah, yeah. yeah, he kicked the ball over the lights on a field goal. Um, like, and like, these are we're, we're not talking about like we're not talking about like, like sidewalk. This is, like no, we're talking about no, no. Stadium. We're talking about the light stadium light posts, which we normally aim at as, as a drill. Yeah, you're just aiming at the. You're trying to hit hit the light posts, and, and most people got... come about twenty feet before it. He would hit it over the lights. Um, you talk about a talent. He was one of those guys that everyone just eyes open at, at the kid. Um, and he was very early on for me as well, um, a junior college type project. And he went to um, Temple. That's what I got him at that time. Temple was not a very good program. Very few attempts there. A kind of lost desire, I think, while he was there. Um, they've had, since, obviously, the program's grown. But um, he, he had, a, he had a, a taste with the Vikings, but just never got the experience at the college level he needed. And because it was so far from me, kind of lost interest. But Ryan Lux was, I mean, did things that were unthinkable that kids today still can't do. Um, and then the other one I'm going to give you is, is, a, is one that's right now. And uh, extremely interesting Ooh. story on him. Uh, it's Eddie Pinheiro. Okay. And, and Eddie Pinheiro is an internet sensation. If you, if you look up Eddie Pinheiro... Um, you're going to see things that are that are um, you know he's all over the internet he's viral on, all, on almost everything he does kicks at Florida right now. Okay. Eddie called Eddie called me and said hey I need your help you know I'm a great kicker and, and I need to show what I can do I need to get to you I have no money help me help me help me do it I get this call all the time um, yeah. this is a call I get I'm the best I'm the best you got to see me so really it goes in this year out that year for the yeah. most part yeah he was extremely persistent with me and um, I was going to Miami for an FBU camp. And really, FBU camps aren't for junior college prospects. Yeah. 
And I said, and I, you know, I called the company. I said, listen, I need to see this guy. Can he come to camp? Can we do something here? And they worked out a payment plan with him and he came out. And from the first fall he hit, it was like, whoa. Like wow. people started, people came around. Um, I think I put him at 70 yards. He made it. Um, and here's a kid who's never kicked the ball in a game oh. in his life. Oh my God. Never, ne- never hit a ball in a game in his life. He was a soccer player. So I, and the dad, I talked to the dad and I did my reviews. I go, and he said, so is the kid, does, kid, does my kid have it? You know, he tells me he's good. And I go, yeah, man, he has it. And I said, yeah. I, I, let me help you out. Just do me a favor, get in the car and come down to Alabama next week. I'm running my camp at university of Alabama. I want you, I want him to come. I go, well, that's a long drive. We have to get gas. I go, listen, it's going to change his life. Just, just get to Alabama. Yeah. Uh, at the Alabama camp, he hit a ball on a kickoff, 95 yards with four point, I think, four, three hang time. It's one of the most insane balls I've ever seen. Hit so for life. people who don't know kicking, can you explain what that means? Yeah, that's, I mean, that's like putting the ball in like the, the 11th row of the stands in a normal stadium. Um, it, it's off, it's where, off where, the charts. Where, so for some, for a kicker, just to, uh, they kick off from where? The 35 yard line. 35 yard line. And then they go all the way. Yep. So you then include the back of the end zone. So you're talking about uh, 20 yards past the back of the end zone. Yeah. Yep. And it, it was one of those things where everyone stands kind of on the end line and everyone kind of turned around. And, and you know, Nick, Sab- <laughs> Nick Saban's there too, right? And he watches this thing. And literally, we saw it hit the building, right? So they had to like they, they at the end they're like we got, we got to measure this thing what it actually was. So we like took a you know we, we measured it off and it ended up being ninety five yards of four three. And needless to say, he got an offer. Good from Alabama. God, he got an offer from Alabama after that, and um, you know went through the recruiting process. Ended up staying closer to home with with Florida, but I mean he was a he's an All American candidate. I think he's he made some teams. I think he went in his first year he went uh, like eighty eight percent or eighty seven percent. Never kicked the ball in his life. Made multiple fifty-plus yard field goals, and, and Florida had a, a, a history of having very unsuccessful kickers. So it just changed yeah. the world there for that program. Just made four field goals in the bowl game, yeah. um, and he's all over the internet. But I mean, he's one of those guys that's that's transcending him. He's different, and yeah. he's a unique story. And um, um, and he's got NFL written all over him. I mean, there as I talked to my my NFL scouts about the current seniors, they're talking about him. Mm-hmm. Um, and he he's a he's one of those talents, man. He's he's sick. He's he's off the map, but he'll be in Vegas. So I can't wait to talk a, to him. He'll be a staff member in Vegas. And, uh, I mean, you, you tell, hey, Eddie, you want to come kick? Yeah, where, coach? You know, where, where do I go? Where do I kick? Um, he's one of those guys. So, you know, we, we call his name. He's, he's there. So, loves kicking and, and uh, is a special talent. So, you got Eddie Pinero. You got Justin Tucker. You got Brian Anger. Uh, you got Troy Van Blarkham and Ryan Lux. I mean, those are, those are – there's more names. But those oh, are five names that, that come to my mind every time I think about it. Which, of course. obviously, that makes them top five, right? Yeah. I, that, yeah. That, that's probably the best indicator. Uh, yeah. I don't think people realize to the top twelve camp the the, the actual uh, the numbers the percentage of how many kids who get to go to the top twelve camp the success rate of them going to college. I mean, I, I was trying to do the math on it. I want to say um, this is not counting them finishing college careers because obviously things mm-hmm. happen. Uh, but getting an opportunity to go to a college and play, mm-hmm. it's like ninety nine percent. Yeah. The only guys I can think of that didn't go to college was by choice. Yeah. They went in a new direction. Yeah. Um, maybe they wanted to play another sport um, or maybe they lost the drive and passion for it. But I think when it comes to opportunity, I think it's 100% for me. Yeah. Um, just because, of course, we, we, we back them. That's why they're there. Mm. Um, and I think the only other one I can think of um, would be more of a character choice. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and, and that was – you know, in a, in a very rare instance where something happened off the field, but um, again, but the opportunity was there. So the talent is 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 there, and, and like I said ninety nine percent is a very good very good number. <laughs> Just it's a little good. It's okay. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah. yeah. So. yeah. Well, Sailor, it's always a pleasure talking to you. Um, yeah, is there, man. Any, is there anything else on your mind that you want to share? Or no, man. I think we covered it. Yeah, we, I think we, we, covered uh, it too. we gave we gave the, the people what they want to hear and. Man, I'm just excited. I'm excited to see your vision. Uh, I'm excited to see it play out. And um, you know, the biggest thing for me we talked about is is we need we need the support of the people. I mean, we need yeah. we need our team Sailor, Team Ruby to step up. Um, you know, if they can contribute and help us out, it's just going to make this thing even better. You have four cameras. We need eight cameras. Yeah. Um, and and really, you look at the history of it, opportunity that's been provided for all these kids. We need more opportunity for the future kids, yeah. and uh, and this will help do that. So. You guys can, man. Contribute for us, and, and let's get this thing rolling. I got my doorbell. Yeah, I'm sorry. Get, go yeah. answer your door. Thanks, Sailor. Right, I'll see you in Vegas. All right, peace out.